At the post office, we can rent a box in order to receive our letters. There are many other places where we can rent a box. At the bank, in order to store valuables. At the train station, in order to leave our suitcase. Boxes are typically identified by consecutive numbers. The boxes or lockers might not all be of the same size. The th things we might want to store might require that. In programming, we have seen variables that allow us to store values. Here, the sizes might also be different, depending on whether we want to store a Boolean value or a floating point number. On occasions, we might need an ordered collection of values of the same type. For instance, when we want to store the grades of the students of a class or the temperatures of each day of a month in a given location. In the same way as we can rent a row of boxes, we could need to reserve an array of variables of the same time. How do we refer to them? We used to freely selecting the names of variables, and in the same way, we can give a name to an array of them. To refer to one single location, indices are used. So, for instance, we could call an array A. Assume it has four elements, four places. Then we would refer to each position by adding an index in square brackets. In this example, we would have a of 0, a of 1, a of 2, and so on. Note that we start with index 0 and increment one by one. Here we see examples of arrays. The arrays can contain different types of values, but in each array, the type is the same for all values. The array could be of any length, but once defined the length at the declaration, its length remains fixed. Here we have a summary of arrays. Elements in an array can be accessed through indices. We should not confuse the value of an element with, with its index. In this example, the value of a of 2 is 1. Another thing to remember is that the first element has index 0. So indices run from 0 to the length minus 1. Here is how we declare an array. We write the type of the element, then open and close square brackets, and then the name we have chosen for our array. We see that the base type can be any type, and we have highlighted the most relevant ones which we will use in this course. Now one thing is to give a name to an array or to declare it, and another one to physically reserve space for it, like in the post office or in computer memory, as in our case. This is done by means of a creation statement, like here, a equals new int 4. This is the notation to reserve space in memory. Note the use of new. We will come back to that later. We can do the two things, declaration and creation, in one line, as we see here in the lower part. To access an element of the array, we use the square brackets, as we see here. Remember that if we have declared and created an array of integers of size 4, its first element is a of 0. And the last one is a of 3. a of 4 would not be defined. It would be an error. So we have given a name, and we have reserved space for an array. Now we want to store values in the different positions. How do we store values? We use the assignment statement, as we have used for variables before. With the assignment statement, we can assign a value for the first time, or reassign multiple times. An array name with an index can be used as we have used variable identifiers before, both to assign and to get a stored value. One thing we can do also is declare, create, and initialize an array all at once, as we see here in the last line, using the curly brackets. Note that in this case, we don't need to write the keyword new. If strings are ordered sequence of characters, 
A question we might ask is whether a string and an array of char are the same thing. They are not, although it is straightforward to convert one from the other. Another question is whether an element of an array might also be an array. Here the answer is yes. In this way, we get what we can call bidimensional arrays. But even multidimensional arrays are also possible. This gives us interesting ways to work with arrays, as we will see later in the exercises. Here we see an example of an array of length 3 that holds as elements an array of integers. If all these integers arrays are of the same length, which they not need to be, we might interpret, it, interpret these as matrices, opening the door to interesting computations. To conclude, we can work with ordered sequences of elements of the same type, and we call them arrays. Things to remember. The length is fixed when we declare an array. Second, all the elements of an array have to be of the same type. And the type of the elements might be arrays as well.